All right, I know it's late and I apologize for that. Can you see my screen? Yeah, very nice. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, so I wanna explain a rationale for our prospective study to compare medical and su surgical management of tethered cord syndrome. Uh, let me see. Um, there is a controversy still. I mean, there was a recent meta-analysis, but even then, he said controversy remains. The author said controversy remains. And James Drake had four uh, scenarios of the clinical syndrome, uh, clinical presentation of patients with tethered cord syndrome. And really, he said many of them are very controversial, whether medical management is any better or surgical management is any better uh, than medical management in many of these scenarios. And, and he said that in tethered cord syndrome, deterioration is extremely slow but persistent, often makes decision-making regarding surgery, particularly in terms of timing, difficult. And in cases of neurologically normal patients without a true dermal sinus tract, he thought that a reasonable approach would be careful observation. And for incidentally discovered tethered cord, he was skeptical of prophylactic surgery. And, and he said, even though there's this mechanism with the um, increased tension and with asymmetric growth so of the spine and spinal cord, so we have a mechanism, but he says that doesn't equal causality. So he's, he, said he was, he was glad, uh, this was a 2007 article, that Steinbach was doing a prospective study. And in that study, uh, they compared medical and uh, surgical management of occult tethered cord syndrome in children ages uh, five to 18. And at the end of one year, really the, uh, the medical and the surgical arms were normal or were the same uh, if you compare the urodynamic scores. And he said there appears to be no objective difference in urological outcomes. So that's in a uh, randomized prospective controlled study. So, so I got involved with the uh, Bobby Jones uh, CSF group uh, as far as, um, you know, uh, getting a uh, prospective study going for tethered cord. And so the question is, why would this study be different? Well, if you look at Steinbach's study, the age range was 5 to 18, but the Bobby Jones, it would be 12 to 70. Uh, in Steinbach's group, it was normal, which normal uh, location of the conus. Uh, so that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a cold tethered cord syndrome. Whereas in the Bobby Jones CSF group, it would be a cult as well as with the caudal location. Um, you know, Steinbach used only Eurodynamics. Uh, we have as our primary outcome variable uh, quality of life <clears throat> and uh, the SF20. Uh, we also have secondary outcomes, uh, and you can see them the Hoffman outcome scale. Hoffman was uh, uh, Drake's uh, mentor, actually. Uh, you have the untethering scale, adverse event recording, and pain management uh, as secondary. Uh, outcomes. Uh, Steinbach had a one-year follow-up, and we have an optional five-year follow-up. Um, so the objective, we just want to see if surgical treatment is superior to non-operative management in symptomatic patients with tethered cord syndrome, uh, no asymptomatic uh, patients. Uh, the patients uh, we're going to strategize or stratify uh, the groups uh, between uh, a, a low-lying conus and a normal conus, which is a cold uh, tethered cord syndrome. Uh, it'll be a crossover study. If uh, patients are deteriorating, uh, they can cross over uh, from the uh, medical group to the surgical group. And um, we're going to have uh, many outcome measures, but we're primarily going to have the SF20 uh, measure for quality of life. Uh, 
So here's the, uh, we're also going to look at uh, how successful the tethering was at the end and the Hoffman outcome scale, which is no deficit to uh, inability to ambulate. And we will uh, carefully um, record surgical complications. I will carefully record pain. And um, this is why this study is going to be uh, different from Steinbach's study. So the, the, those are my comments. So thank you.